What's up everyone, this is Ryan here, and in this video we are going to be talking about creating a flexible user interface and some best practices uh, which you can apply to do so. Now if you're wondering what I mean by flexible interface, I'm going to kind of open this up by relating a past experience of mine, which was basically, uh, I remember uh, spending about two months building uh, some iteration of one of my apps, I can't remember which one exactly. But uh, I spent a couple months building it, and I was all happy because I felt like I had actually kind of gone through a whole list and just made sure that it was a really sort of nice release quality app at the very end, uh, handled the bugs, did a really good job just sort of tweaking the UI and stuff like that, uploaded it to the Play Store and gave myself on a, pat, a pat on the back, only to realize that uh, I had completely forgotten to handle screen sizes, uh, various screen sizes, or even landscape mode for that matter. So basically what I ended up having to do is pull the application off the, the uh, Google Play Store and then spend like another week or so creating alternate resources and a whole bunch of other stuff like that. Uh, because the app basically looked like shit on anything other than the device I was using at the time to test the application. So the purpose of this video is going to walk you through is going to be to walk you through some steps to sort of alleviate that kind of issue, and uh, hopefully you won't be making the same mistake as I did. <clears throat> now, uh, before we get into the specific tips, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about a general rule which uh, you should pay attention to when it comes to creating layouts, uh, whether you're worrying about making them flexible or not. And that general rule is to avoid nested layouts as much as possible. So, as you can see on the right here, that's a screen cap of one of my applications, and we have a, sort of a recycler view which contains uh, these things that I called alarm widgets. And uh, as you can see here, you would kind of think that those were probably created with uh, linear layouts, uh, because everything's sort of lined up nicely and uh, flexible. Uh, but actually, I have a screenshot of the actual component tree on the left there, and as you can see, there was not a single linear layout used to create that layout. Now, why would I bring that up specifically? Um, one thing that you need to keep, keep in mind is that uh, you want to avoid as much as possible uh, creating a series of, a deep hierarchy of layouts, particularly if you're using a series of uh, linear layouts and a series of layout weights, and the reason for that is that these layout, uh, whenever you're using the linear layouts with the layout weight, uh, for reasons which uh, I can't really explain to you because I'm not like a an friggin' Android an engineer, but uh, these layouts are actually drawn twice. And what ends up happening is if you have a deep hierarchy of linear layouts using the weight, uh, it sort of becomes an exponential equation to uh, sort of draw them up. Now, obviously, if you're working with, say, one, two, three, maybe even four nested layouts, it's probably not going to have that much of an impact impact on a modern uh, device. But it's just something to keep in mind in general. Like, if at all possible, if you can build something with a flatter view hierarchy, it's going to be drawn more efficiently. And uh, I think this is particularly important in the case of uh, recycler views. As you can see uh, on the right, we have an example of a recycler view. Uh, if you have an exam, if you have a, sort of a case where you're building uh, your recycler views specific item has a really deep hierarchy and lots of layout weights and things like that, then there is a pretty good chance that it's going to have some kind of impact on your performance. Not to mention, it's just more legible, in my opinion, to have a flatter view view hierarchy. So uh, I just wanted to take a moment to mention that, and uh, we can kind of just jump into the general tips here. So, best practices for flexible layouts. Uh, on the right, we have a screenshot of the application that we'll be building. Um, now, I am going to have... Uh, er, this particular layout does use some nested linear layouts. So I'm not trying to say that you can't use them at all or you should never nest layouts. That's totally not what I'm trying to say. It's just if is what I would suggest is try to keep them as flat as possible. Anyways, uh, let's talk about uh, a couple different tips here. So the first best practice for creating a flexible layout, pardon me, is to use layout attributes which adapt to the screen size at runtime. So what I'm speaking of specifically is the layout weight attribute for linear layouts 
linear layouts and then also using uh, for example the match parent attribute when you're specifying a layout height or a layout width and uh, both of these different <clears throat> attributes what they do is they actually are calculated um, at runtime and then what's going to happen is your views will actually adapt to the size of the screen at runtime creating sort of a flexible layout whereas if we specified sort of specific pixel values for the views then those are of course going to be uh, you're going to have the same size of view uh, across for example like a small screened device or a huge tablet and obviously that's going to look like shit so we want to avoid that um, by the way don't worry about uh, writing this stuff down unless you want to. We're actually going to be applying all of these different things in practice uh, over the next couple of videos. So if there's something in here which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, then don't worry about it. We'll actually be coding it live, not live, but we'll be coding it out soon. And I'm quite confident that once, once you actually sort of code it out and see how it works in practice, then all of this stuff will kind of become second nature. Anyways, moving on to number two, use fragments to your advantage. So what do I mean by that? Um, as you can see on the, uh, in the screen cap that we have, um, there's actually two fragments which make up this user interface. Now, if you're a beginner, you might be wondering what a fragment is. I'll be explaining that in detail, but just almost think of it like a miniature activity. It's got its own life cycle, and it's sort of its own portion of the screen which it handles, and then those are managed within an activity. So don't worry about the finer details for now. Again, we'll go over it later. But this particular application is going to use two fragments. The first fragment is, uh, as you can see up on the top, we have the little X button there, and then the equation uh, 900, or the expression rather, 900 times 655. And that area there is its own fragment. And then the input below, uh, including the operators and the uh, numbers, all of, the, all of that stuff is contained within its own fragment. And we'll see why that not only makes it so that our user interface is going to be very flexible, but it also really makes the uh, back end of the application a lot simpler, cleaner, and uh, easier to work with. So uh, that's another general tip here. Now, just a very brief note. This is a note not really so much for beginners, but some people choose to use custom views instead of fragments. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't even think about it, but uh, that is just something to be aware of. Some people advocate not using fragments at all and just using custom views. I just thought I would mention that because some people swear by it, uh, some people swear by fragments. Fragments. Um, there are differing views, but you're not really going to have to worry about that stuff until you're uh, quite a bit further along, so no need to stress about it at the moment. And the last general tip for uh, creating a flexible layout is to use alternate resources for different orientations, screen sizes, densities, uh, uh, even versions, for example. And I'll show you how to create those in a moment. But basically what that means is what we can do is we can take a layout. For example, uh, we'll be calling one of these layouts, uh, I believe, fragment input. And we can create an XML layout for landscape mode, uh, for large uh, large screen sizes. Um, there's just a whole bunch of different things that we can specify. And uh, what that's going to allow us to do is that uh, in, the, in a case where if we, for example, test our application in landscape mode and something's squished together or there's not enough room for the display or something like that, maybe the buttons are too small, then what we can do is sort of adjust or make the adjustments in the actual, in a separate layout file, I should say, and then sort of make our app look prettier on uh, in landscape mode or large devices, uh, what have you. So that is it for my general tips for the flexible layout. We will do, do a tiny bit of coding just to kind of get things set up for the uh, next lesson. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just hop over to the code now. So since next video is probably going to be pretty damn long, I just wanted to take care of a couple of preliminaries before we get to that stuff. So uh, all we're going to do here is basically create two fragments. We're not going to worry about uh, uh, figuring out the layouts for them, but we're also going to finish off the layout for our activity calculator. So what I'll get you to do is just head over here. I'm just going to make some more room here and uh, hit app res layout. 
and then also open up the Java package here and uh, what we'll do is we'll just right click on there go to new fragment and select a blank fragment and what we'll be calling this thing is uh, input fragment it's the first one that we'll be building um, we're not going to build any of the fragment uh, methods or callbacks or anything like that. We'll end up just deleting a lot of that stuff anyways, so you can just go ahead and uncheck that stuff. And fragment input is a totally acceptable name for that, so we'll just hit finish. And that should generate both the layout and the fragment class for us. And uh, yes, I would like to add that to git. Perfect. And then we're just going to do one more here. Again, right-click, New Fragment. Today it would be nice, thank you. And then we'll just type in Display, oops, Display Fragment for that one there. And that's all we need to do there. Again, oh, just un uncheck those. Perfect. And we can add that to the Git. I'll just say, remember, don't ask me again. Otherwise, I'm going to get pissed off. <laughs> And uh, so that's all we're going to do for the fragment stuff. Go ahead and open up Activity Calculator if it isn't already. And we can remove this padding here. That's not going to be useful. I'm going to rename this to Root Activity Calculator. That's just a convention I like to use for the root layout. Uh, we'll keep that as a relative layout. That's totally fine. And we're going to do something a little bit different here. Now, since our fragments are basically going to be static, that means we're not going to have to in inflate them at runtime or make any significant changes like that. One thing we can do is we can actually just place the fragments directly into the layout as so. So we're just going to create a new uh, XML tag here called fragment. Uh, for layout width, we're going to say match parent. For layout height, we're going to say wrap content. We'll handle that in the fragment itself. For ID, we're just going to say, oops, Android ID. Oops, it's not auto-completing for me. That's always frustrating. <laughs> for ID, we're going to call this frag, oops, frag display, just like that. And what else have we got here? Uh, we're going to specify a name, which is going to basically point to the fragment class, which we use, which we uh, wish to use for that. And that's going to be com dot wiseass, and this one is display fragment, just like that. And uh, so that's just so that the uh, layout knows which fragment class to use when we actually uh, build the layout at runtime. And uh, the last thing we'll do is just kind of an extra thing. We're going to say tools and uh, layout and what am I looking at just tools layout and that's going to be at layout fragment display so that's all we'll do there and this is basically just so that we can kind of preview our fragments uh, in the design window next what we'll do is let's just copy that and then create another one and this is of course going to be for the other fragment so we'll rename that to frag input just make sure that it points to the uh, input fragment. And then finally, frag input down here. And uh, last thing we need to do is obviously we want this fragment to show up below the other fragment. So we'll just say layout below. And this is kind of the power of using the uh, relative layout if you're not super familiar with it. And uh, that ID is going to be frag display. So, uh, yep, I think that's everything taken care of there. So we'll just preview this. Uh, it's kind of not really... Um, let's see here. Okay, that height needs to be match parent, rather. And then the other one's going to be frag wrap content. So uh, there's not really much to preview, but as you can see, we've got our fragment display, which is, of course, going to be the little X button and the uh, where we'll, our display will uh, the numbers will show up in our display the equation and all that stuff and then below it we're going to have the input fragment which is going to contain all the buttons that we use to uh, input our expressions and equations and things like that so uh, that is it for this part of the tutorial uh, the next video is going to be a lot of fun it's going to be very practical hands-on stuff pretty much from here on we're going to be doing a lot more coding and a lot less theory 
but uh, I still like to include some theory type stuff because a lot of this stuff just really needs to have a bit of an explanation, otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense. So uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.